Into the wild I'll go and into the wild I am It's been a while, freedom child Since I left my roots back home Into the wild I'll go and into the wild I am It's been a while, freedom child Since I left my roots back home Welcome to the Free Birth Society podcast. This is a radical space for women who are ready to celebrate their autonomous choices in birth, motherhood, and beyond. Together, we'll learn about wild birth through personal narrative, we'll explore the politics of birth, and we'll analyze everything that relates to our lives as women from a feminist perspective. Here's your host, Emily Saldea. It's been a wild freedom This week, I have artist and first-time mom, Callan, telling the easygoing story of the birth of her son. She recalls her lifelong love and obsession with babies, mothers, and all things birth, and the exciting revelation that she was ready to start having her own babies and could just do it on her own. One sunny day, with rainbows cast about the room, she gave birth. We speak on the incredible power of women telling their stories of autonomous birth and how quickly we can upgrade and evolve through our collective experiences. Callan's story serves as an example of how beautifully simple birth can be when you just stay home and have your baby. Okay. Hi, Callan. (laughs) Hi. We'll, we'll start the whole podcast laughing. Okay. All right. Calling in from Sedona. Tell yes. Tell me all about you. Where does your mothering journey begin? Well, I am an artist. I live in Arizona and I pretty much started my mothering journey when I was really young. I've always felt a call towards motherhood. I've always loved babies. Every time I see a baby, I'm just like, um, you're an angel. I love you. <laughs> and I don't know. I guess when I was 20, I started seeing some of my friends having babies and I was like, that's where it's at. That's what I want. And I really started calling in a baby probably in my 20s. Was when your friends having the babies before you, were they having positive experiences with birth and motherhood? You know, to be honest, they weren't really talking about that. They were just showing pictures of them with their babies and they didn't really talk about their birth story. I wasn't really um, surrounded by that kind of talk in my twenties at all. You know, people really talking about birth and um, I'd say more in my thirties when I really started to follow a lot of different people online who were, you know, into natural birth and stuff like that that was more when I started to see it more often Mm -hmm. yeah okay so then what happens you start thinking more seriously about it yeah I started thinking more seriously about it and one day I was talking to my therapist on the phone during the pandemic and she said um, I was telling her I wanted a baby and she said well what's keeping you from having one now and I was like whoa I was like nothing (laughs) you know that I know of and I was like whoa I could have a baby now you know I was already like 33 32 at the time and you had a partner yes yes I am still with the same partner he's amazing we have a great relationship it's beautiful you know I've had some bad relationships in the past so I'm just so happy to have my person that I feel great with and that was huge for me. You know, of course I want my baby to have a good dad that treats me right. So I was like, wow, that's like perfect, you know? So we started trying to have a baby and it didn't go as smoothly, excuse me. It didn't go as smoothly as I thought it would. You know, I thought, I didn't know. I thought I'd get pregnant like right away. And how long did it take? It took nine months, which Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of time, you know. Mm-hmm. It's enough to make you 
probably go a little crazy. Yeah. I started to question myself, you know, a lot and I had two miscarriages. So Mm -hmm. in that nine months. Yeah. Okay. So you, you they were chemical pregnancies, which technically are, you know, when you first find out you're pregnant, I was like freaking out and then it was gone and it was Mm -hmm. very dramatic, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, And I found out that I had a thyroid condition, which, you know, I didn't know about, but anyways, I got pregnant nine months later and that one was like sticking. So that was really nice. And that's, that's my baby now. (laughs) And where were you at with your learning about how you would birth and how you would have a pregnancy in that nine months were you already like aligned with your commitment to free birth or when does that's that a great happen? question yeah uh, when I was in my conception period yeah so I at that time knew that I wanted a home birth that was pretty much the only thing that I knew mm-hmm. um, I was not yet exposed to the information about medwives, as you say, (laughs) and about the um, system being involved with midwives and that they're liable to them, you know, like I knew that in the back of my head, but I didn't really realize what that meant. You know, I probably thought, oh, that's good. That's safe. That's, you know, that's what I need. (laughs) But man, did I go down a rabbit hole (laughs) while I was pregnant. It's actually quite the story so going into my pregnancy I was questioning myself because of you know it took a little time to get pregnant found out I had this um, thyroid problem that runs in my family but I got medicated for that so I was doing fine but I I started to strangely I started to to doubt my ability to like be pregnant and Mm -hmm you know, because I'd never been pregnant before, you know? (laughs) And so, you know, that's really, really common, right? Like that's, yeah, because of your podcast pregnant, like one month. And I was like, I'm infertile. I knew it. (laughs) Yeah. I'm never going to have a baby. You know, all these things pop up when you start meeting people that are like, it took seven years and you're like, Oh, that's going to be me. And anyway, you know, your mind just goes to the worst possible scenario, but Anyway, I was pregnant and it was sticking and it was fine. And I was just in my head and that's what the system loves because they get you even more in your head. Mm -hmm. The second that you start to feel like, oh, I'm good. You know, they, they find a way to make you question that, you know? Um, But anyway, I was going to a midwife in the beginning and she's a wonderful person, but she is tied to the system. Um, and I was feeling really good about it, but I kept having a call towards free birth. It kept popping up for me um, on Instagram, you know, people I was meeting um, and your podcast, of course. And I started listening to your podcast. And um, basically, I just went down the rabbit hole, like, crazy you know and I started researching and when I get into something I really get into it but as I was researching it I I was like in tears and like I was kind of scared because I knew deep down that I needed to free birth you know I really felt that I needed to free birth and that was what was meant to happen and I would like listen to your podcast and I would just be in like tears like At the time, we were moving slowly to Sedona. Um, Shortly after I got pregnant, we found our house in Sedona and we'd been looking for years. So I really felt like my baby was like calling me into Sedona and to have a free birth. And it was just really intense, you know, it was a lot. So what about free birth was attractive to you? Um, Honestly, the biggest thing for me is my privacy. Um, I'm a, I'm a pretty private person. That's why this is like the first podcast I've ever been on because. Oh, really? Yeah. Because I just feel it's really important to tell this story, but, um, yeah, I'm pretty private. And to me, it really comes down to like, if I can't poop in front of this person, 
then how am I going to have them like in the room, you know? Mm -hmm. And I kept thinking that like every time I'd go to meetings with the midwife, I'd be like, you know, this is a really nice lady, but I really don't see her being in the room. You know, I don't think I want her in the room, nothing personal, but I don't want anyone in the room <laughs> except for Steve, my partner, you know, it's so, so private. Go ahead. How did you, so there's that going on. And then how do you contend with, or how much contending was there with the you know, the like devil's advocate of the other side of like, but what if, and you know, oh, all, oh, all yeah. the stuff that keeps women. Oh, it was, them, it was but. not just like, oh yeah, I feel called towards free birth. I'm going to do that. It was scary. It was really scary because I had all these doubts of myself and my body. And I was really needing to trust myself that was the biggest thing like I need to trust myself and trust my body and just know that it, that it's the best choice you know and I I went back and forth a lot you know I didn't choose to go wild and have a free birth till I was 30 weeks pregnant yeah <laughs> so you were with the medical midwife until then yeah gotcha pretty much and um it kind of happened organically too, because she had been saying, yes, I will come to Sedona, which is two hours from where her office is and where I'm from, because I was moving in, at that time. She had been saying, yes, I will make the trip to Sedona. I will come to your birth, blah, blah, blah. And then kind of like last minute, she not last minute, but right before we moved, she said that it's actually going to be an, kind of an ordeal and it's going to cost more. And I was like, okay, you know, I was already feeling a shift. You know, I was thinking about finding a radical midwife here or radical birth keeper um, here. Um, and it happened organically because I tried to do that and it didn't work out, you know, and I was 30 weeks. Um, one woman who does birth work outside the system here, she um, said that she could try to make it and we were trying to work it out and, but she would want to meet with me double so we could get to know each other. And, and I totally understand that, you know, but I was like, I don't want to go to meetings anymore. I feel good. You know, I feel good. like that was my motto every day. I feel good. Why should I worry? my baby's fine. I feel good. Like I'm healthy. Um, and someday my baby's just going to come out and it's going to be yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, it's simple. Yeah. So your you partner know. was all good with that. Yeah. In the beginning, when I first told him, I was like in tears and I told him, you know, I think we should just do this on our own. Um, I think it's going to be fine. And he said, um, I don't know if, if I feel comfortable with that. It feels like a lot of pressure on me, but we were driving up here a lot because we were moving our stuff slowly and working on our house. And we were listening to your podcast a lot together. And he really, after listening to the episodes with me was like totally down. And he was like, you know, nice. I actually think that this is really cool um, because he's very like anti-government, anti-system himself. And so Wait. he was, he was like, yeah, because we, you know, we've been vegan for like six years and we're very much, you know, anti the system. And so <laughs> it's kind of part of our nature, you know, to be outsiders in a way. So Okay. Yeah. And so at 30 weeks, you are just kind of, it's just kind of unfolding that way. And when do you really like lock it in? Like, this is what I'm doing. This is like, what does that look like at the end of your pregnancy? At 30 weeks. Yeah. When we moved here, we met virtually and in person with two different midwives outside the system. And, and I was I thought about it for probably um, a couple weeks 
few weeks and I was like, do I really want to pay $6,000 for someone I just met to like be at my birth, you know, because at that point you can't really get to know someone, you know, and like I said, and well, and your issue is the same, whether they're yeah. licensed or not, your, if your core issue is around privacy. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same whether they, yeah. For sure. And yeah, but I, I really just knew in my heart that it was going to be okay. Like I just felt it, you know? So that was really nice, but I was also scared. Of course, I also had moments where I was scared and and I listened to a lot of affirmations. Um, I took your course, your free birth course, and that was really helpful. Um, of course, as you say, you and Yolanda say, you don't have to do any research to give birth. You can just give birth. But for me personally, it felt better to, to know about certain things, you know? Well, the modern woman, you know, it's like, we have so much unlearning to do. We have so much, um, we've been so misguided about our bodies and about how it works that I'd say probably the average woman who does choose free birth very much wants to research and learn about it. And also, yeah, I love, I love remembering that like women give birth in comas, you know, women give birth. That's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's just give birth. Whenever, all, I felt all scared. Yeah. whenever I felt scared, I did think about the coma thing. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> that was one of my, it's kind of a bizarre one, but that was one of my touchstones in my most recent birth. I just, anytime I just was tripping, I was like, but women do this, even if they're unconscious, like, yeah. okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I love to tell people that too. They're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what yeah. else do you want to share about the end of your pregnancy? And, and I'm also curious about, you know, your like community, your family, like, are you telling people what's that like? Yeah. We decided not to tell anyone. And if they asked or whatever, we would just say, yeah, we're going to have a midwife there because I just didn't want well, here's the thing. Not everyone knows about spontaneous physiological birth. They just don't. No No one does. does. (laughs) They should. (laughs) They should, you know, it's like, even, even with doctors, it's like, it's totally understandable. And I have doctors in my family, you know, that I told them I was having a free birth and they said, you're not going to get to a hospital in time. And I was like, for what? You're like, oh, that's you know? literally the point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever want to go to a hospital right. ever. So anyway, I, I didn't tell people, um, except for my therapist who I probably shouldn't have told cause she got all weird, but she ended oh, up, no. re- she ended up reading a book about it and stuff. So, cause she was like, you're supposed to stay neutral. <laughs> I know. I know she doesn't it's funny. It's funny. um but yeah I told her and then I told my mom who, and my mom responded well she was mm. like you're so brave oh my gosh and I'm like mom stop that's sweet <laughs> it was really yeah, sweet mom, are you? so sweet yeah she wanted to be there too but you know the privacy thing um so, so end of my two hours away so is your family there too two hours away yeah, my dad and my stepmom are two hours away, and my brother. Um, my older sister's in Portland, and uh, my younger sister is also in Phoenix. And, and then my mom, my mom is in Prescott, so she's an okay. hour and a half away. Yeah, that's nice. That's like a really nice amount of distance from yeah. family. Totally, it's perfect. <laughs> You're not just popping by, but you could see him in the day. Yes. Yeah. You know, honestly, Emily watching or taking your course and listening to your podcast uh really helped me to not feel alone because of all the stories and and you know following women who have free birth and watching them and their babies thrive and I have a friend who free birthed I talked to her and and so you know that really helps to have the other women that have done it or um 
that want to do it. Having my partner was big, you know, he is very supportive. Um, and every day as part of my like prenatal thing for myself, I would go out into nature barefoot and just kind of like connect with nature. And I just kind of asked the mountains that surround my house to like look after me and the baby. And that, that to me is like my, you know, extent of what you would call like a religious thing that I do. And, and so that felt very comforting to me. Yeah. There's a mountain right behind me. It's called Thunder Mountain and they call it the grandfather mountain. And it's just like so powerful and solid and, and it really felt like the mountain was watching after me. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but whatever. It was, it was nice. (laughs) It was nice. All right. So take us into your birth. Okay. Um, I, I was pretty much in labor. Looking back, I was in labor for a while. You know, I was having sensations for like a month (laughs) and they really just got intense one day. Um, the day before my son was born on his guest date, which Mm -hmm. is so rare. I was, I was shocked by that. I was like, I was expecting, I was just expecting to go to 43 weeks, but um, just in case, because I didn't want to end up being like impatient. But I was having more back-to-back sensations the day before the guest date. Uh, my partner and I had made love in the morning and right after that, I started having really strong sensations. Um, and I remember just kind of going through the day thinking, you know, don't get too excited. Don't think that it's labor, you know, reminding myself, you know, to not just expect it. So I just went through the day. And then that night, uh, we went to go to sleep. And as soon as I laid down, they got even more intense, I think, because I was just so relaxed, you know. And it's kind of funny because my partner had randomly gone running like the day before he hadn't run in so long and he like had gone to play disc golf and all this stuff and he was like totally exhausted you know like oh, no. just <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I was like I'm definitely in labor now like trying to like wake him up because I was I was like oh my gosh this is it you know and he was like so tired he was not having it and I started like moaning from the sensations and stuff and he like even put like earphones in or earplugs in at one point oh my god <laughs> at the time I was pretty pissed but looking oh back no. it was funny yeah well I mean I was just like how dare you not be prepared <laughs> totally and like witness me yeah no but the headphones are a strong up being... move <laughs> the, the earplugs <laughs> yeah strong. earplugs yeah I know I know because we'd been told so many times by like our yeah. and my friend and, and hearing it in stories like don't All expect right. it it could take three days and as soon as you start labor go to sleep that's what he remembered like go to sleep go to sleep so he was telling me he didn't me, mean that for him I know I know <laughs> I know honestly I have to tell that part because it's so funny now um but (laughs) at the time I was like oh I'm so annoyed with you anyway I (laughs) I was in it you know I couldn't go to sleep there's no way I was like in it so you know what I mean and I went into the bathroom I sat backwards on the toilet for a while and like laid down on some towels and I was just like trying to breathe basically I labored in the bathroom for a while and pretty much till morning I tried to go back to sleep and I was just moaning and just trying to get through the sensations um how did it feel to be alone 
honestly, I was just in it, you know, I wasn't really, I was a, a little bit, um, happy to be alone in a way because it was nice and dark and quiet mm -hmm. and I think that it did help me to progress in a way because I was just fully in it I wasn't worried about anyone around me so I guess it was nice in a way I was a little bit like where's Steve you know <laughs> but it was actually nice and then when he woke up in the morning he set up our birthing pool that we got. Um, it was like a pretty big birthing pool and we put it in what is gonna be our son's room. Um, right now our bunnies are in that room, but anyway. Bunnies <laughs> are taking over right now. But we set up the birth pool. I labored you know, all through the morning, it was kind of a blur. He was like feeding me snacks and stuff. And <laughs> it was just getting through the sensations. I was just trying to breathe, you know, literally my lungs were sore the next day because I was yeah. just breathing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you can do. Yeah. So, it, you know, I labored for 16 hours um, which isn't for a first time mom, I guess that isn't that long, but I was tired, you know, I hadn't slept the night before and I was starting to think, you know, how long is this going to take because my water hadn't broken. I hadn't seen a mucus plug or anything. And I was like, whoa, how long is this going to take? You know, but around noon, I started to lose my mucus plug and we we really knew at that point that it was progressing, which was nice because I knew that, you know, it's going to, it has an end now. You just want to see something. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, totally. So st stuff started coming out and I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know, then it really started to feel like exciting. And I started to see like little blood clots coming out. I got a little bit freaked out for some reason because I, I didn't remember anything in my research about that in that moment. And Steve was like, everything's looking really good and healthy. And I was like, thank you. That's all I needed to hear. You know, like, I love it. Like as if he knows anything, but it's like <laughs> such a sweet thing to say because you just want the reassurance. Yeah. <laughs> That's so <I> know. Cute. <laughs> it's like, mm, it all looks healthy. <laughs> That's adorable. I know. And yeah, so I did start to get freaked out. I think that's when I transitioned, you know, because I started to like feel a little bit scared. Um, but he reassured me and and that was huge, you know, to have someone reassure me, you know, looking back, sorry to go on a tangent, but <clears throat> looking back, I'm so glad that I wasn't being continuously monitored because that would have really set me back and put like bad thoughts in my mind. And, and I really don't think that that's good for a woman's brain when she's in labor to be You're talking about cervical exams. Yeah. Cervical exams. Yeah. Can you imagine like getting fingered every hour or two and being told how slowly you're opening up? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't even mean anything because you could yeah. Anyway. So I was progressing really well and I was just listening to, um, Yolanda's affirmations and my playlist and my partner was right there giving me water and just being quiet, which was nice. <laughs> and it was just, honestly, it was, it was great. It was a wonderful day. I was really happy you know I was in pain I would say but I was happy you know and it was just me and my partner and it felt really magical and like wow we're starting this like crazy adventure together you know so my mucus plug came out and then I started having the bloody show um and then uh, throughout the process I pooped probably five times you know and 
I had felt like I had to go poop again. So we went to the bathroom and my partner was in there with me and I started to feel my vagina pushing, which I'd never felt before. So I was really excited. I looked at him with like really wide eyes and I was like, I'm pushing. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) so he helped me get back into the birthing pool and the pushing feeling didn't come back again right away because we moved places you know on the toilet it's like you're letting go and then you move and but it came back as soon as I went into the lunge position the lunge position was like it it like really started the process and helped me to progress a lot (laughs) um which I kind of knew that before I I think that in a way I was kind of keeping myself from progressing a little bit with positions throughout my labor because you know I was a little bit scared and I was like just need to do it (laughs) just get into the right position so I finally got into the lunge position and I was leaning over the pool and I was pushing but I wasn't like trying to push you know I was just letting my body push and Steve was reminding me like because I was kind of like screaming a little bit (laughs) it was reminding me to like keep my voice low and to you know just let it happen which you know I think that was good and I just breathed and let my body do the work and and all of a sudden Steve was like I see him I see his head and I felt his head coming down of course I'll never forget that feeling yeah (laughs) We know, Steve, we can feel it. (laughs) Yeah. It's cute, though. I felt it coming down, but I didn't know that it was, like, showing yet. Sure. And and then he was like, I see his face. He's so cute. And I thought he might have been posterior because my back was hurting really bad. I I injured my tailbone at some point because it was really sore for a while. But, um, yeah, he was facing backwards and and you know a couple more Steve's behind you Steve was behind me in the birth pool because um my butt was out of the water so I wanted him to like catch him so he didn't go in the water um I guess I could have just gotten out of the pool but when you're at that point yeah you know, nothing makes sense. don't want to you're move not like, you're not like tasking correctly <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> And, um, yeah, he came out and Steve handed him to me right away through my legs. And he was like, take your baby. And he was crying and, and I was just like in shock. And I was like, you know, you're here, you're finally here. And, um, I didn't know that Steve had like got it on video, but it was just such a magical, at some point I'm going to learn how to like edit that and share it, but it was just such a magical, such a magical experience, seriously. And I'm like, so grateful that I had such a good experience. And I really do think that it's because I just trusted myself and let it happen, you know, Mm -hmm. the way it was supposed to. Yeah. And keeping it simple. Yeah, exactly. Like, I love something that you said that really stuck with me was, um, like, you can literally just stay home and have your baby, you know, it's, it's a simple thing when you let it be simple, you know, like it's literally as simple as pooping, like your body will, I mean, maybe it's a little bit, you're right, right. right. (laughs) but But like it's the same, you're right, (laughs) (laughs) but there's limbs, (laughs) just, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm with you, I shouldn't say that, no I'm with you though and it is I mean it's the it's the head the fear it's the overanalyzing it's the what ifs you know that make it not simple because physically physically it is it is actually fairly uncomplicated almost always you know yeah Yeah, almost always so in a 16 hour birth it sounds like you just like really were able to keep up and just track with it and yeah yeah it was amazing um I 
couldn't have asked for a better experience. You know, he was born in the afternoon and there was like, I have like rainbow prism things in the room. There was like oh. rainbows shining on us. Yeah. You know? And it was just, yeah, it was, Magic. it makes me want to have birth again, you know, give birth again. Mm-hmm. For sure. I really think that is the design. Yeah. Because that's what we hear from women who have, who have amazing births, you know, and who have physiological births and, and who are well supported. Like there's definitely a combination because, you know, there are of course women who free birth who are in horrible relationships and have terrible dynamics and okay, that's complicated. And, and maybe they're not emerging wanting to have another baby, but Mm -hmm. it makes sense to me that in a healthy environment with an intact birth experience where the hormonal matrix is fully, you know, intact and the mother baby are untraumatized that the result of that is to want to continue breeding, you know, on like a, like a very mammalian level and Mm -hmm. also on a spiritual level that we want to keep bringing souls here, you know, that we want to keep being a portal and a channel. Mm -hmm. It makes sense to me that that is like the intended design. Yeah. And that amazing high that you get too. (laughs) So what about postpartum? What do you want to say about, about your first time in that domain? What was that like the first, you know, couple days or weeks? Um, it was different, you know, it was, it was challenging for sure. Um, I definitely think that because I free birthed, I was already on that trajectory of trusting myself and trusting this whole process. Um, It was really helpful to have taken your class because you mentioned what a normal newborn looks like. And, you know, I often thought, you know, what, what would I have done, you know, because he was like blotchy and yeah, and stuff like so that. <laughs> yeah, they, they're so weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know, it was beautiful. It was challenging and it was beautiful. And the breastfeeding was challenging because of the tailbone injury. Mm-hmm. But um, I was very, very privileged to have my partner home and making me meals and we had prepared meals for ourselves like we made a whole bunch of like really hearty stews and put them in the freezer and we um just knew that we were gonna need to have those (laughs) that we were gonna just be we prepared to just be present with Gregory as much as possible you know and that was huge for me, you know, to just be with him and just be bonding as much as possible. And that's what we did. And when do you start to let your family and friends in? Um, Well, it happened a little bit earlier than I wanted to, just because um, I had this like worry about my milk because I, I hadn't seen any milk coming out and it had been like three days, but it, it started coming as soon as we had the family come to bring, they had gotten me a pump and they had sent it to themselves instead of my house. So we had his parents, I know it's kind of complicated. Um, we had his parents over like four days postpartum. I wasn't ready for it, but it was nice. You know, they just came for a little while, but I told people I wasn't going to have anyone over for at least 10 days you know um but yeah we we didn't have my family members over until like the next month you know and it was it was perfect it was great yeah everything about his birth and him like being here now has just like elevated my life you know, it's, yeah, I was going to ask you how becoming a mother and going through such a magical birth and, 
and navigating postpartum has informed or changed your art? Oh yeah. Um, well, I've been making birth and pregnancy art for a long time because I've always been really fascinated with birth and pregnancy, but um, now it's like even more so, and it's so much more meaningful to me. Um, when I was six weeks postpartum, I created a painting called A Wonderful New Life. Mm. Um, it's one of the prints that you got. And mm. I, <laughs> love that. I, I love one. that one. It's very personal to me because <laughs> it's, it's basically me and Gregory or it, it represents all mothers and birth, you know, and it's just, it really just um, encases how I feel after this experience because it's, it's a wonderful new life for me and my son, you know, and I can't stress enough, like how much the birth and the postpartum um, made that more wonderful, <laughs> you know? We know so many of, you know, our sisters, our women, our mothers are not emerging from their births and postpartum thinking what a wonderful new life you know yeah that's, exactly it's not the the frame that so many women have so it's it's so like when you wake up to this stuff it's so sad to like see that around you it's like all around me in my life and Oops. like the debt the trauma the disempowerment the not being able to breastfeed you know all these things it's like it's totally a domino effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So I'm so grateful and I'm so happy, you know, to share this story with anyone I can because um, listening to stories like this was seriously medicine for me. Mm -hmm. um, and most of us in this society we need to like reprogram our brain because you know there's certain things in movies that I like remember so vividly of women dying during birth and stuff and it's crazy how it's been ingrained in our brain you know what I mean mm -hmm. yeah and how quickly we can clean it is the other like very encouraging part right because how many women now have literally just heard a couple episodes of this podcast and then go free birth and rewrite their entire relationship to their body yeah. and lineage to come. I mean, it's so cool. And, and, and the, the healing happens forward and backwards because when a woman really embodies, you know, a lot of these principles and, and, and values, whatever we're going to call them, it, I very often seen it, even in my own family, it also facilitate healing in my mother and my grandmother, you know, backwards who are still alive. Like, so it's so yeah. cool how much it, like you said earlier, just the ripple. Um, yeah. It's, it's making me think of my, one of my favorite quotes from Sister Morningstar is um, what one woman can do, all women can do. And I feel like that oh, is wow. the container of this podcast in so many ways is just that's what happens, right? We hear a story and we're like, that could be us. And then it becomes us. And then we tell our stories and then it just. It's keeps so important. It, this podcast seriously changed my life. Thank you. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. So many of the women on this season are full circle. Like they, they found it. They found free birth through the podcast and then free birth and then came back on the podcast or we're not back That's on so for the first cool. time. It's so beautiful. I love it. All right, girlfriend, is there anything else you want to say before we close today? Um, no, I don't think so. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for having me on the podcast or on the show. And um, thanks for being so inspiring and for helping to empower helping to let women find their power you know they have the power they just need to find it within themselves you know yeah so. yeah I think the storytelling is, is such a such an easy way we all learn so fast 
Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. I think yeah. women, I don't know about men. Maybe it's like this for them too. I don't pretend to understand men, but I feel like women, we've got this thing about storytelling, you know, that just lights us up and just the amount of learning I feel like can be integrated from a story mm-hmm. is so different than like reading a book or statistics or, oh, you know, yeah. you know, totally. Yeah. It's like, it's very powerful. It's very, very powerful. And for anyone that wants to check out your art, where can they, where can they go find that? Oh yeah. Thank you. Um, my website is callenmikel.com. K-A-L-L-E-N-M-I-K-E-L. And my Instagram is Callan McKell. And you can find my art there. We'll put links for that as well. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you. you. So nice to hear your story. I love the rainbow prism water birth visual yeah. I have now. Yeah. <laughs> it was truly magical and I'm just so happy. <laughs> My son turned 10 months today. Oh, yeah. this is still pretty fresh. Yeah. Yeah. And cool. congratulations to you and your baby. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for today, my sisters. Check out everything we do, including one-on-one and group coaching. Learn about our private membership, in-person retreats, and more on freebirthsociety.com. Our online courses are on freebirthsocietycourses.com, including our flagship course, The Complete Guide to Free Birth. Don't miss the Radical Birthkeeper School if you're ready to become the authentic midwife that women are searching for. Together we rise and the revolution starts inside each of us. I'll leave you with our Free Birth Society theme song, Wild Woman by Aruba Red. I honor you for the wisdom you held, the ancient traditions of plant medicine and womb magic. I feel the spirit of the ancestors as I place my hands upon my belly. This sacred portal will be honored. Eons upon light beams of survival withstanding the eradication of our power by design. I will not allow the separation of our young to be forced upon me. My sisters will no longer birth in captivity. The picket line redefined from burning our wild women to paralyzing us and drugging our babes. Strapped down in a clinical white bed, drying up the milk from our breasts, keep your needles. My family will never again be doomed to chase those dragons or your poison. We reject your fear. We choose love. Everything with intention. Death, ascension. I will fly and bring her back from